Learning to grow your self-confidence when you have ADHD can feel like a really daunting task, especially if you don't have the right mental and emotional mechanisms in place. Unfortunately, so many of us who were late diagnosed with ADHD in adulthood spent our entire adolescence knowing that something was a little bit off with us. Maybe we were more rambunctious than our peers. Maybe we were a little bit lazier or more unmotivated than our peers. I happened to be that chatty Kathy who had to sit in the front of the classroom with my desk touching the teacher's desk. It was really humiliating and it absolutely affected both my self-esteem and my sense of self because I was afraid to show up authentically for the repercussions that I would pay when I did. This absolutely affected my belief in myself and my abilities. And that hammered down my self-confidence even further. My name is Sarah and I am an ADHD coach and I help women lean into their ADHD brains and to build their self-confidence so that they can thrive. I have a free masterclass. It's about 35 minutes long and all you have to do to gain access to it is in the comments say free class and I will send you the link to sign up to watch my self-confidence masterclass. Today I'm gonna give you six ADHD friendly tips that actually work so that you can have unshakable confidence. Tip number one is educating yourself about ADHD because knowledge is power. Learn about ADHD on a deeper level. By learning how ADHD can affect our brain function, our executive function, and our emotional regulation is a great way to empower yourself as an ADHDer and to also learn how to use the tools that work for your ADHD brain instead of trying to do everything through a neurotypical lens, which is why a lot of us struggle with our self-esteem in the first place. A great resource is Attitude Magazine. It's an online publication and I will link Attitude Magazine's website in the description of this video. You're not lazy and ADHD has nothing to do with intelligence. There are people with ADHD who have very high IQs and then people with lower IQs who have ADHD. We simply have a difference in our brain wiring. You can also Google successful individuals who are diagnosed with ADHD to help you feel more empowered that An ADHD diagnosis is not a sentence of, I'm never going to make it in life or I'm always going to be a failure or things are always going to be so hard. Yes, we have a different brain and we have challenges with our different brain, but there are so many successful ADHD people who are thriving and contributing to our society as a whole. I personally, now that I've been studying ADHD for so long, see ADHD as more of a strength than a limitation because I have the tools to work with with my brain instead of against my brain. And again, just coming back to this first tip that knowledge is power. So learning about ADHD can be really, really helpful. Tip number two is to identify your own personal strengths and talents. What are your own unique strengths and talents? Get a piece of paper out and a pen and start brain dumping all of the accomplishments that you've achieved, all of the things that you're interested in. And if you are lucky enough to have your zone of genius, your hyper-focus, something that you're being paid for in a professional career or in a hobby that you're passionate about, that's a bonus that so many neurotypical people don't have. Our ability to hyper-focus is absolutely a strength. So many of us are creative, resilient, and really good at problem solving. We tend to see things through a different lens than neurotypical people. And that's why sometimes when you know, you're at work and there is a problem to be solved, you are the person as an ADHDer who's able to solve that problem because you have almost that bird's eye view on a situation that many neurotypical people do not have. So if you're an ADHDer who is lucky enough to be creative and an out of the box thinker, let that boost your self-esteem because that absolutely is an asset that should make you feel really, really good about yourself. Tip number three is to set realistic goals and also to celebrate every single achievement, even the small ones. And a really easy way to do that is to break tasks down into smaller pieces and celebrate each and every one of those tasks as you complete them. We struggle with our executive function, so sometimes a job can be too big for us. 
By breaking tasks down into smaller pieces, it alleviates overwhelm. It doesn't damage our self-esteem because now all of a sudden a task doesn't seem so daunting. And then once you've completed a small aspect of a bigger job by breaking the task down, make sure to celebrate. Celebration creates dopamine. We're dopamine deficient. There's science that backs that people who celebrate their achievements actually have a higher self-esteem than people who do the same job, but they only look at where they came up short instead of celebrating all of the things that they did right along the way. Try it and let me know how it works for you. This type of positive reinforcement will enforce your capabilities and will motivate you to continue to move forward. Now, if you're finding these tips helpful so far, please give this video a like by liking this video. More ADHDers in the algorithm will see this video who might be struggling with their self-esteem and their sense of self. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a video from me. Tip number four is to develop coping strategies and skills. These may include time management, techniques and organization skills, mindfulness practices and strategies for controlling impulsivity as well as emotional dysregulation. By mastering these skills, you're able to feel more in control like you're in the driver's seat, which will have you better equipped to deal with life's challenges. Tip number five is to build a support network. Surround yourself with supportive people who will offer you encouragement and validate you. And if you are interested in having just a little bit more support than than what your family and friends and work colleagues are already giving you, and you are female, late diagnosed with ADHD, self-diagnosis is valid. I happen to have a free Facebook group linked in the description of this video. You can click the link and request to join. It is a safe place to be your ADHD self, full of validation, support, and care for each other as an ADHD community. Tip number six, the final tip is to practice Gratitude. By practicing gratitude, you're really shifting from what's going wrong in your life to what's going right in your life. Think of it like this. A lot of us have, you know, lawns that we have to mow every week if you're a homeowner or you have seen lawns in your neighborhood. When a lawn is healthy, weeds can't get through. But when a lawn is sparse and hasn't been watered enough, it's easy for weeds to get through. So think of a healthy grass or a healthy lawn like gratitude. The more you're grateful for things and the weeds are the lack of gratitude, the complaining, the you know feeling bad about ourselves when we come up short, the more gratitude we show, the less of those bad feelings come in. So practicing gratitude is a great way to change your perspective on your own life and your own accomplishments and how you show up in the world. It's a great way to boost your self-confidence as well as your self-worth. I also love practicing gratitude because it forces us to self-reflect. We're so good at complaining about the things that don't go right in our life. But how often do we celebrate and get excited and feel thankful for all the things that do go right in life? It also brings us awareness into our viewpoint of all of the great things that we do have. And I absolutely love practicing gratitude. It's hard to be grumpy. It's hard to complain. It's hard to feel bad about ourselves when we are in an attitude of gratitude. And just a quick reminder that if you're interested in gaining access to my free mindset masterclass, please comment free class and I will make sure you get the appropriate link to sign up to that class. Now remember, building unshakable confidence is a process. Think of this as a marathon, not a race. I hope that one or all of these tips works for you. Let me know in the comments which tip you're already using and which tip you're going to adopt. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. I will see you next week in the next video.